Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to work on this cute buttoned scarf. It is a one day quick project. So let's get started. Go ahead and have a look at our tools. I'm going to use my roll with it melange. And I honestly do not like this yarn. It is very thin and it tends to twist up and get kind of tangled. So like the little hairs there get kind of twisted up. But I like it as a doubled yarn, as a thick yarn. So I'm going to double up this yarn. I'm using one skein. And, but I'm using two strands and then I have my six millimeter hook, two buttons and a darning needle. So let's begin. So we're going to use the primrose stitch today and with the primrose stitch you have to use a multiple of two. I mean sorry a multiple of three. So I'm going to make 60 chains. So go ahead and make your slip knot. and make your 60 chains. I'm going to make my 60 chains and I will be back. I want to just get us started. I'm going to start off with a smaller chain but I want you to make 60 chains. So I have 24 chains here which is also a multiple of three. I'm going to add two more chains and now your loop on your hook does not count. You're going to skip these two chains and yarn over and go into the next chain, into your third chain with a single crochet. Once you've made your single crochet, go ahead and chain three and go back into that same stitch with another single crochet. Now you're going to skip two stitches, one, two, two chains, sorry. Make your single crochet chain two and another single crochet into the same space that is your pattern for the first row skip two go into the next stitch make a single crochet chain two and back into the same stitch with another single crochet so keep making your stitches across skip two and i'll be back uh, when I get to the end. Okay, so this is what we should have so far. Okay, when you get to the end of the row, you will have two chains left. Go ahead and yarn over and go into that last chain with a half double crochet. So you're going to skip one and then in that last stitch, make a half double crochet. Now you're going to chain three and turn your work. And now in that chain three space that you made when you single crochet, chain three, single crochet, you have a three chain space there. You're going to skip this stitch here and then go right into that three chain space with three double crochets. Oops. And this is three. And you're going to do that for each of your three chain spaces. Go into the next three chain space. Do not chain. Once you make those three, just go right into your next three chain space with three double crochets. And that's how you make your primrose stitch. So I'm going to keep going until I get to the end. I'm going to meet you at the end and show you what to do on your third row. And then you can just continue from there with as many rows as you want. So I'll be back. So I'm at the end and I'm at my last three chain space. And I'm going to make my last three double crochets. And now in your last stitch, you're going to make a half double crochet. Okay chain three. Your chain three counts as a double crochet because at the end of the row you're going to put your half double crochet. Your chain three, sorry, counts as a double crochet, not a half double crochet because when you get to the end of the row you're going to put a half double crochet into that chain. So once you've made your chain three, go ahead and turn your work 
And now you're going to make a single crochet, go right back to what we did in the beginning, which was our single crochet, chain three, single crochet in the same space. Make sure that you go into that third, that middle double crochet of the three that you made in the previous row. You're going into the middle double crochet. So you go into the middle one, make a single crochet, chain three and back into the same space with a single crochet and just do that all the way across go into that second double crochet of that next cluster chain three and put another single crochet in that same space and that's your primrose stitch so basically you just keep going back and forth um I don't remember how many, let me see how many rows I did. So I made 12 rows of my primrose stitch. You can make more rows if you want to, but because it's so long, it's going to be really long. And the wider you make it, the higher up on your neck it will come. So go ahead and make your rows. Again, I made 12 rows of my primrose stitch. And then when I come back, I will have all of my rows done and then we'll go from there. Okay, so I'm back and here are all of my rows. This is how wide I want for it to be and how long I want. So silly me, I went ahead and I cut off too soon. So I'm going to insert my hook back in here because we're going to make a row of single crochets going all the way around. So let me get my hook in here properly and attach my yarn. Okay, so I have my yarn attached back on here. I've made my first single crochet. I'm going to add two more single crochets to this corner here. This is the first, this is the last stitch of the row. That's that, um, that last, um, that last three chain space here on the end. And go ahead and make three single crochets. Now we're just going to come around and go into each row with a single crochet. So each of your rows should have a single crochet. Here's another row here. Just put it in every available space that you see there. It doesn't have to be perfect. So there's another space right here. Trying to come as close as I can without getting blurry. And then there's another space here. So you're just going to make one single crochet going all the way around. into each of your rows when you get to your corner here when you get to your corner down here you're going to add another three um, single crochets and continue making your way okay so i'm at my first corner with my second corner and i'm going to go into the stitch with three single crochets i just wanted to show you what that looks like as you're coming around your corner that's why we do those three single crochets in the corner because we want to come around and make a nice smooth transition going around and then just continue going you know you got the right number of the writer <laughs> the right number of single crochets because it should be the same amount of single crochets that you made. So I'm at the top of the row right where my last row of my prim row stitch is. I'm going to go into that three chain space with one single crochet and then right in between those two stitches there, there's a loop right here. I don't know if you want to call it a loop, but I'm going to put a single crochet in there anyway because it brings it together a lot. It makes it look better that way as opposed to be doing it like this. It kind of stretches it. So I'm going to go into this space here and make a single crochet and then into that next three chain space with a single crochet and just keep doing that all the way across. In that space in between those three chain spaces into the three chain space and just do that all the way across this space here is that space when you transition so when you make that last single crochet when you make your single crochet chain three and then make another single crochet when you transition over that's what that space is so you're going to go into that space so we can give it a more finished look and it doesn't stretch. Okay, so I'm at, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm at the end of my row. I'm going to go into that first 
single crochet that I've made of the row with a slip stitch and chain one and then go ahead and bind off go ahead and cut your yarn okay so pull that through I will weave that in in a moment I'm not going to do that on camera but this is what we have so far so we have all of our single crochets here I, it's folding in because I did it kind of tight try not to do your um, single crochet is too tight but this is what it looks like going all the way across you have your single crochet, <coughs> single crochet excuse me and your primrose stitch here and again this is not a bad yarn it's just better thick i just like it better doubled up um, so let's go ahead and add our buttons now this part is completely up to you how you want to fold it let me come up a little higher with my camera I'm gonna fold it in like this now you can do this how you want to do it you can make it flap over like this if you want to however you want I'm gonna keep it simple and just fold it like this and then I'm gonna add my buttons so my holes are big enough that i don't really have to make um extra holes or make a um a chain to make holes because i already have a few rows here so you want to decide where you want to put your buttons i have these little ground buttons here and i will link them in the description box below um they're just some wood buttons i have a whole bunch of them but i just decided where i wanted to put my buttons and then i went ahead and did that and again i wanted to be a little crisscrossy i don't know how else to say that so again i just decided where i wanted to put my buttons and i figured i'd put them right here nice and close to one another not too close so that they're touching but just about right here okay so now um now that i've decided where i want to put my buttons i need to add the button and you just want to test it out just to make sure that that button is going to go through there nice and easy and it does so I'm going to lay that here, right here. It's just giving me a, an idea of where I want to put my button, where I want to attach. My, I'm going to put my button where I want it to be, right here. Because I know that, that it's going to go into this hole here. So now go ahead and grab and then put your hook in. I'm sure most people know how to sew on a button and pull that through now this is kind of my strand my strands kind of long so i'm going to cut that off real quick and then keep pulling through do not go all the way through you want to have enough uh your string long enough so that you can tie that button tie it in the back and then i'm going to go diagonally since it's only two holes this should be good enough because it is a thick yarn so now we pull that through like that there i hope you can see i hope you guys can see come a little closer and then i'm just going to take out my yarn and go ahead and tie a decent size knot here overhand knot make sure you're pulling it nice and tight so that that button stays on there give it another overhand knot and pull it through you can even put glue there if you want to just to make sure but if you pull it tight enough you should be fine and then you can add a little bit of glue excuse me some super glue now all of a sudden i have big up sorry guys um so yeah so that's how that goes again i'm going to angle it a little bit and then go ahead and i can slide my button right on there i'm so sorry guys i have the hiccups please forgive me okay um go ahead and do the other button i'm gonna do my other button sheesh and i will be back okay so i have my two buttons on here this is what it looks like on the back <laughs> And now I'm going to show you what she looks like on the mannequin. All right. So this is what we have. I think it is so cute. And what I love about the buttons is you can 
uh, fold the scarf however you want. So if you want to bring it in a little bit more, if you want to bring your scarf in a little more, you can do that because your holes are big enough. Let's see if I can. Your holes are big enough that when you make your stitch, that you can put your buttons anywhere you want to. So you can let it hang however you want it to hang. This is what it looks like on the back. And back to the front. Very nice scarf. Nice and cozy and nice and thick. So I want to thank you for watching this tutorial. Don't forget to subscribe and follow me on Facebook and Instagram at Camtai Handmade Crochet. Have an awesome day, guys. Bye-bye.